D2DNY, Real World HVAC Simplified. And now I'm gonna show you how to diagnose your system using superheat, okay? So this system, R14A, the compressor is on and running, the lines are sweating, the fan is spinning, got my suction line temperature right there, our, our evaporator outlet temperature. And I know that uh, most people is gonna say, well, this is your suction line and it's not your evaporator outlet. Well, I could say it is because the pipe is insulated, as, it, as you can see, it's insulated. And the gain or increase in temperature between this pipe right here and the evaporator outlet, maybe it's gonna be less than, I would say two, two degrees because the pipe is insulated. So it's, good, it's the same temperature, all right? Um, so how to check your superheat and, and, and how to use it for diagnostics. So right now, uh, this is R14A and we're at 100 PSI. That's your pressure scales on the outside. And uh, on the inside is your temperature scale. It's a temperature. And you can see that R14A is pink, right? If you're a beginner, you should know that. If you're a pro, you should al already, already know that. All right, so 30 degrees we're at right now. That's a saturated temperature. That's a temperature at which the refrigerant is boiling on the evaporator or the indoor unit. And um, so from the 30 degrees, we have gained 45 degrees, uh, not gain, we have gained 15 degrees, which equals to 45 degrees. Now this system is using uh, a thermostatic expansion valve or TXV. And with a TXV, 15 degrees, rule of thumb, <laughs> in, the, in the HVAC industry, we have what we call the rule of thumb. I don't know why it's called rule of thumb, but you know, and rule of thumb, uh, uh, 15 degrees is a sweet spot. If the system is maintaining 15 degrees of superheat, it's working optimal, right? Uh, but I believe that it ranges from, goes from from 10 to 20. If you, go, you know, if you're going back and forth because the, the, the TXV will, you know, it will adjust based on, you know, uh, uh, load and, uh, and uh, load and, uh, and temperatures, it will go back and forth just to modulate and maintain your superheat. So it will it will not always be steady, but in this case, we're sitting right at the sweet spot, 15 degrees, we had 45 there, and we had 30 on our accelerated temperatures, right? So we're good. But let's just say we were at 30 here, and then we were at, say, uh, say we were at 35 here. That would be only five degrees of superheat, five, right? An handful, or a handful. Five degrees of superheat, that's low. That would be indicative of low airflow, right? No airflow, low airflow, clock filters, um, um, loose belt, defective fan motor, closed air damper. What else? Did I say dirty evaporator coil? Dirty evaporator coil. Um, what else? What else? What else? The system could also be overcharged as well, but typically it's usually what I just explained the first sets have to do with airflow. Because in a regular service call, the system won't be overcharged unless someone recently overcharged it. And if you did recently overcharge it, then you wouldn't have no cooling. It wouldn't be working. So if you're coming in and this 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 only happening right now after six months or a year of working okay, and the customer said, hey, it's been working fine for the last five summers now we have this problem and you come up and you see that you have five degrees of superheat you know already yo airflow problem airflow go check your go check your evaporator all right um now on the, on the flip side if you should have uh 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 high superheat so in other words let's just say we were at um like we are right now we are at uh we are at uh, 30 as you can see 30 in the needle and um, so now we come back over here on our evaporator outlet and we are reading 60. So now we have, we, have, we have 30 degrees of superheat, right? 30 plus, ter plus 30 equals 60, right? So now we have 30 degrees of superheat, 30 degrees. 30 degrees, that's high, that's really high. The most common cause for that is low refrigerant, not enough refrigerant going into your evaporator. 
and so it's boiling off too quickly which means you're picking up a lot of sensible heat that's why your suction line temperature is so warm and that's why your super rate is so high because you don't have enough refrigerant in the system most likely that's what's going to be it's going to be a uh, low refrigerant right your system of a leak or the meter in the voice is clogged we've got a re uh, uh, we've got a restriction somewhere a clogged uh, txv or defect defective txv uh, clogged capillary whatever um the restriction in the system right so if a super heat is high uh it's going to be one of those two things uh, almost almost all the time you'll find that it's going to be low in the fridge and it's number one and it's number one on the list low in the fridge when you have a leak somewhere then number two faulty meter in device uh number three we got restriction or it could be all of the above uh, there's other other uh, possibilities as well, but they are more complex. Those three are the more most common ones that you'll come across. All right. So that's pretty much it. You know, diagnosing a system using only superheat. Um, if you like this video, uh, give it a thumbs up. If it helps you out, give it a thumbs up. Share it. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe. I do upload videos on a weekly basis.